What's up, peeps? It's me. I'm back. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's being smart. And I hope everybody is staying on code. All right, I just wanted to come to y'all right quick. And um, I wanted to bring y'all the latest information uh, in the Tyree Nichols uh, uh, situation. Uh, other than the fact that everybody's talking about Kamala Harris and, and, and Al Sharpton turning um, the young man's funeral into a democratic rally and, and, and pandering to black people and just turning it into something other than what it was supposed to be. But, but that, like I said, I blame the family. That's what happens when you start inviting these folks in. You understand what I'm saying? These folks that have always been establishment, these folks that ain't interested in nothing, but keeping their place within the system. Uh, they're not interested in black empowerment. They're not interested in uh, black uh, mobility, upward mobility. The only thing they're interested in is keeping the status quo so they can keep getting paid. Um, but other than that, there is uh, 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 some updates as far as the Tyree Nichols situation is concerned. So uh, I want to bring you that information right quick because I don't want to be here long. Um, I don't want to be here long with this video because I'm going to go straight into another one where we're going to talk about all of this going on with these Chinese balloons in the air. Okay, but uh, let's get into this. All right, this is coming out of The Hill by Jared Gans, uh, February the 3rd, uh, February the 3rd, 2023, 7.31 p.m., right? And it says, um, white officer involved in fatal arrest of Tyree Nichols fired. Memphis Police Department. That's, that, that's, that's coming from the Memphis the Police Department. And notice that the wording is different when they started talking about the white officer. When they were talking about the black officers, it was the brutal beating. It was the murder of, you know, as, as bad as it could possibly be. Anytime the headlines were talking about the five black police officers. But now that we're talking about the white police officer, now it's the fatal arrest. Now it's the fatal arrest of Tyree Nichols. You understand what I'm saying? All this brutal beating and all of this murder of and all of that, you don't hear any of that in this headline because who they're talking about? They're talking about the white officer involved. Okay? Now, this still is not identifying, and I don't think in any way, I didn't read in anywhere in this article where they identify the seventh officer and talk about whether or not that officer has been fired or charged or whatever. But uh, just based on this article that I'm about to read to you, it don't look like it's going to be any charges, but, but let's go on. A white officer involved in the fatal arrest, like I said, no brutal beating, no brutal murder, none of that. A white officer involved in the fatal arrest of Tyree Nichols last month has been fired from the Memphis Police Department for several conduct violations during the incident. Conduct violations. Okay? The department said in a statement on Friday that Preston Hemp Hill was terminated for his role it, from his role for violations of personal conduct truthfulness compliance with regulations concerning a taser compliance with regulations concerning equipment and inventory and processing recovered property now what the hell this truthfulness and violations of personal conduct and all, what what exactly is that supposed to mean now this is just the, the things that they say he was fired for okay after a thorough review of the circumstances surrounding this incident, we determined that Officer Preston violated multiple department policies, the department said. Hip Hill is the sixth of is, is the sixth of Memphis police officers fired from the department for their actions after Nichols, Nichols a 29-year-old black man, was pulled over. The first five officers who are also black, uh, they make sure to, to they make sure to let you know. We're talking about the white officer versus the black officer. But they'll be the ones that come and say, race ain't got nothing to do with it. Race is not a part of this. This is not a racial situation. But you notice even in these articles, they make sure to separate Preston 
hip heel out and call him white and separate him from the five black officers who were not only fired, but actually charged and arrested, okay? The first five officers who are also black were fired and charged with, with multiple crimes, including second degree murder. Body camera video showed that the five officers brutally beat Nichols for three minutes and left him on the ground without medical attention for more than 20 minutes. The footage also showed Hip Hill was the one who pulled Nichols out of his vehicle after the police stopped him. ABC reported that Hip Hill's body camera footage showed him chasing Nichols after he ran away from the officers during their first confrontation. But Hip Hill turned back to the location of the traffic stop instead of continuing to the second location where the five officers eventually beat him. Now you notice they don't say anything about the tasing. In this article, in this Hill article, they don't say anything about the repeated tasing coming from Hip Hill and that's the reason why Tyree took off running because of the repeated tasing. But they say in one of the reasons why he was fired was because of compliance with regulations concerning a taser. But later on down in the, when they describe the brutal beating and all of that, you understand what I'm saying? They don't say anything. They say he was the one that pulled him out of the car. So he was the one that instigated the violence. He was the one that did, that escalated that whole situation. Again, black cop showing out for the white cop. The white cop that starts the situation and the black cops move in and take over. Now just listen. Hip Hill was previously relieved of duty at the start of the department's investigation. A seventh officer who, has, who was not identi identified has also been suspended. The department said after announcing the two suspensions that their suspension was suspensions was delayed because it focused on investigating the five officers who were directly involved in beating Nichols. I guess so, because they were black. All of them were involved. Everybody was involved. Hip Hill was the one that instigated the whole thing, that escalated the whole thing. He was the first one that brought, that brought violence into the stop. And he said... I hope they stop his ass. None of that's being said. None of that is being brought up in, in this article here from the Hill. Okay. This is still ongoing administrative. This is this is this is still an ongoing administrative investigation, and multiple MPD officers are under investigation for departmental policy violations. The department said in its Friday statement. It said Hip Hill has served in the department since March 2018. So he ain't been there just like they were talking about. They took all of these rookies, all of these inexperienced, uh, 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 hothead police officers and put them on this specialized unit with no supervision, no management or whatever. And they running around telling other officers to stomp people. Why? Because that's, used to, that's what they're used to doing. The Memphis, the, the Memphis Fire Department has also fired two emergency medical technicians and a lieutenant who failed to conduct an adequate patient assessment of Nichols. That's it. Like I said, no mention of the fact that Hip, Hip Hill, the white officer, was the one that actually instigated the violence. He was the one that actually uh, 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 brought it to a physical level. He was the first one to have any kind of physical contact with Tyree Nichols that night. He was the first one to administer any, any type of excessive force. By tasing this man when he was already on the ground, and, 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 and from the footage it looked like he was already handcuffed or they were trying to handcuff him or whatever. But he was already on the ground, surrounded by three, four, five, six officers. So he's just fired. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, like they say, they never really get fired. They just get transferred. So he's just fired. And, and, and the only reason why he's fired, nothing about his part, the part in his part in the violence, his part in the escalation of the violence, nothing about that. Again, um, 
terminated for his role, violations of personal conduct. I guess that's because he said, I hope they stomp his ass. Truthfulness. So I guess he must have lied on a report or something. Let's see if that brings any charges. Compliance with regulations concerning a taser. So even though they don't mention in this article anything about him tasing this man and starting the violence, they let you know that the tasing had something that the, the tasing had something to do with him being fired. Compliance with regulations concerning equipment and inventory and processing recovered property. So I just wanted to bring you that and let you know that they fired him, but it still ain't no charges. Still ain't no charges. Okay? And like I said, pay attention to how this whole article is worded so much different because they're talking about the white officer involved in the fatal arrest of Tyree Nichols. But then as you read on, anytime they start talking about the five black officers, they want to emphasize that the five ex uh, uh, black officers brutally beat him. So you can see the double standard clearly in, in, in the articles that they write. In all of this, you can see the double standard. You can see the double speak. Okay? But he has been fired. And that only happened because of the, 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 the public outrage over him not being fired. Now we got to be just as outraged over the fact that that seventh officer still hasn't been identified and still hasn't been uh, fired. We need to be outraged over the fact that it looks like there are not going to be any real charges against Hip Hill. So he'll just skate through. He'll just skate by. Okay? Um, now, because um, this whole thing with Tyree Nichols has brought back up this thing about this George Floyd uh, uh, Justin, Justice in Policing Act or whatever, I, I just thought I'd bring to your attention this article that's coming from The Hill as well. And this was by uh, Julia Shapiro. It was, also, it was also today, uh, February 3rd, 2023, 8.16 a.m. Clyburn calls for Democrats to compromise on policing bill. Okay? Well, that ain't nothing new. That ain't nothing new because I think it was uh, uh, the beginning of last year, the beginning of 2022, maybe sometime during 2021, when they first came out with the bill, he was the one that was then talking about uh, uh, the Democrats need to compromise. We may not get everything that we want in the bill. Uh, 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 it's okay if they remove the qualified immunity part out of the bill and all of that, you know, uh, uh, just so that we can get something. And just say we got something uh, on police reform or whatever. Well, basically, he's saying the same thing now. Now that it's come back up, now that Tim Scott and, and um, Republican Tim Scott and, and Democrat Cory Booker are talking about going back into no negotiations over this George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, uh, Clyburn is back to saying the same thing. We might not get everything we want. You understand what I'm saying? We just going to have to compromise. You we just going to have to let the police have everything that they want. You understand what I'm saying? And we just get something that's on paper that don't mean jack shit. Because first of all, what black people need to understand is um, where is it? Where is it? The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is a nothing burger. It's another nothing burger like H.R. 40. You understand what I'm saying? Just like that H.R. 61 that Sheila Jackson Lee just introduced, talking about uh, acts of white supremacy. And all, all of these acts are, are all of these uh, uh, proposed acts and proposed bills and all of that, all of them are nothing burgers. They're empty. The George Floyd, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act don't do nothing but 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 lay out all the different ways that the police departments can get extra money. If they comply with this, if they do this, if they do that, they can get all of this extra money. So all it is is just a plan to keep funding the police. That's all it is. And something talking about banning choke holes and and, and banning um uh, 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 the things like what um. Derek Shaven with the knee with the knee suppression on George Floyd talking about banning stuff like that. Doesn't say anything about qualified immunity. 
doesn't, doesn't say anything about truly holding these police officers accountable and punishing them when they commit these crimes. Now I've already gone over it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a video on my channel some time back. So it looks like we're going to have to do that again. It looks like we're going to have to get this, uh, George Floyd justice and policing act, and we're going to have to break it down and we're going to have to read it together so that black people will understand it's a nothing burger. Just like all this other stuff that these black Democrats and these black politicians come up with that are supposed to represent us. All of these proposals and all these bills and stuff that, that when you break them down, they, as a matter of fact, they do us more harm than good. They do foundational black Americans. They do black Americans more harm than good. Okay. So I, I'm not going to read a whole lot of this. Um, all it says is Representative James Clyburn from South Carolina, the fourth ranking Democrat in the House, is urging members of his party, the Democrats, to compromise on a policing bill instead of attempting to pass the perfect piece of legislation. There's no perfect bill, the longtime congressman told the Washington Post, the early 2002, uh, in an interview published on Friday, to keep trying to get the perfect piece of legislation rather than a good piece of legislation. I just don't know if that's a good thing to do. Then he goes all into talking about uh, uh, the Civil Rights Act of, of 1964, which they have completely taken away from us. You understand what I'm saying? And gutted it to use it for everybody other than us when it was specifically for us. You know, he talks about how uh, we didn't get everything that we wanted in the Civil Rights Act of, of 1964. So they had to go back and they had to, in 65, they had to do the Voting Rights Act. And then in 68, they had to do the Fair Housing Act. And then in 72, they had to do the Equal, uh, Equal Employment Opportunity Act. And also, so basically what he's saying is, you know, maybe just maybe we're just going to have to take this in parts. Okay, well, ain't nobody got time to take it in parts. You understand what I'm saying? When you see... Uh, uh, black folks, especially black men, unarmed black men that ain't hurt nobody being murdered like this in the street by police. We don't have time to be breaking it down. We, we don't have time for that. So that's basically what he's saying. Um, Clyburn's, comment come, come, Clyburn, Clyburn's comments come amid a renewed push for policing reform in the wake of the fatal beating of 29-year-old Tyree Nichols by Memphis police. During a traffic stop in early January, several officers pepper sprayed, tased, and beat Nichols, who later died from his injuries. Now, whoever wrote this article for The Hill, you understand what I'm saying, didn't mind let it be no, uh, uh, didn't mind keeping the race out of it. Who was this again? Uh, Julia Shapiro, she kept race out of it. And she made sure that it was just several officers. She didn't talk about it was a black officer, it was a white officer, or whatever. It was the police. That's all that matters. So she kept race out of it. Um, during a traffic stop in early January, several officers pepper sprayed, tased, and beat Nichols, who later died from his injuries. Senator uh, Tim Scott, South Carolina, he was a Republican, the top Republican negotiator on police reform in the Senate, has indicated a willingness to return to the issue, but warned that resurrecting Democrats' George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is a non-starter. So, so we'll see how far they get with that. We'll see how far they get with that. But like I said, all these articles will be linked in the description box. You understand? So y'all can get down there and y'all can read and all of that. But I just wanted to let you know that these were the updates as far as what's going on uh, legally on that legal side and politically um, as far as the Tyree Nichols situation is concerned. And I'm not going to even, I, I, I'm not even going to do a video on that disgrace at this young man's funeral. And the fact that uh, there's video showing uh, somebody in the crowd, somebody out in the in the in the in the, in the, uh, in the congregation or whatever that had on uh, a Nazi sw uh, a swastika, a swastika band around their arm. So I, I'm not even gonna get into that. Like I said, I, I, I just I just pray that you know the family does not get caught up 
because it looks like it's heading that way. It looks like they got one foot on the raccoon train, you know, and, and I'm hoping somebody will pull them off, but, you know, that's what uh, uh, Ben Crump and, 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 and Al Sharpton and the likes of those people are there for. They're there to uh, uh, decimate the energy. They're there to uh, uh, turn the energy towards some other way. You understand what I'm saying? They're not there for justice. They're not there for justice. They're not there for reform. You understand what I'm saying? They are there for a bag. And they get their bag from the dominant society by causing the families to lose focus. And causing the families to start focusing on something other than true justice for their loved ones. Okay? So, um, but let's move on. Because like I said, I don't want to be here real, real long. Now let, 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 let's get into go. Let's get into what's going on over the skies, right? Now this is coming from CNN Politics. Oren Lieberman, Haley Britsky, Michael Conte, and Nectar Game. This was uh, today, Friday, uh, February 3rd, 2023, updated 1.14 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pentagon tracking suspected Chinese spy balloon over the U.S. Okay? So, uh, evidently the Chinese got, got a balloon that's traveling, you know, over the, over the United, over the, in the skies of the United States. And they're saying that it's a spy balloon. Okay? So, let's see what this is all about. The U.S. is tracking a suspected Chinese high-altitude surveillance balloon over the continental United States, defense officials said on Thursday, a discovery that risks adding further strain to tense U.S.-China relations. Pentagon spokesman Brig uh, Brigadier General Patrick Ryder said the U.S. government has been tracking the balloon for several days as it made its way over the northern United States adding it was traveling at an, at an altitude well above commercial air traffic and does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground. Okay. Y'all let that sink in. The Chinese got one of their balloons over here and they just letting it stay over here and do what it want to do. Speaking on background, a senior U.S. defense official said senior military officials had advised President Joe Biden not to shoot it down due to fear the debris would pose a safety threat to people on the ground. So they claim that the reason why they're not shooting it down is because they don't want to hurt nobody on the ground. Okay, but you just said. See how these folks lie? You just said that because it was so high and because of the altitude was so far above commercial air traffic that it doesn't present a military or physical threat to the people on the ground. So how is, how is blowing it up up there going to now pose a threat to people on the ground? So just leaving it up there is no threat. Although you don't know what it's up there for, you don't know what it's equipped with, you don't know anything, but that's safer than blowing it up and getting it from up there. That's safer for people on the ground. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. And you just, I, I don't, but okay, anyway. We are confident that this high altitude surveillance balloon belongs to the People's Republic of China, the senior def de defense officer official said. Instances of this activity have been observed over the past several years, including prior to this administration. While the balloon's current flight path carries it over a number of sensitive sites, <laughs> the official said it does not present a significant intelligence gathering risk. The balloon is assessed to have limited additive value from an intelligence collection perspective. The official added, okay, well then why are you calling it a spy balloon? If it has no effectiveness and, 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 and it has limited uh, additive value as far as intelligence collecting is concerned, then why are you calling it a spy balloon? 
The U.S., the official said, is taking steps nevertheless to protect against foreign intelligence collection of sensitive information. Now, you got, uh, 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 you got Trump. Let's be real, because, you know, we're not, we're not about a Republican or a Democrat. You understand what I'm saying? That's not what we're all about. We're about our reparations. You understand what I'm saying? And we're about destroying this system of white supremacy and replacing it with a system of real justice. So first you got Trump, and they're finding all of these uh, classified, top secret, highly classified documents in his per personal home at, uh, at Mar-a-Lago. Now you got Biden. You understand what I'm saying? They done found all kind of top secret, uh, 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 highly classified information in a couple of his uh, personal homes. Then they was talking about Pence and saying that maybe just maybe he had some classified documents and top secret stuff and all that in one of his homes. And now you got the Chinese with, some, with, with balloons that you calling spy balloons. You calling them that. We not. You calling them spy balloons. Lord Jesus. Listen to this now, y'all. Let's 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 keep on going. The US, the official said, is taking steps nevertheless to protect against foreign intelligence collection of sensitive information. We are also tracking tracking what abilities it could have in gaining insights and continue to monitor the balloon as it was over the as it was as it was over the continental United States. On Friday, a Chinese foreign minister spokesperson said the balloon entered U.S. airspace accidentally. It is a, a civilian airship used for research, mainly meteorological purposes. Affected by the westerlies and with limited self-steering capability, the airship, the airship deviated far from its planned course. The Chinese said side regrets the unintended entry of, of the airspace airship into U.S. airspace due to force majeure, the first person said in a statement. The U.S. believes China's spy satellites in low Earth orbit are capable of offering similar or better intelligence, limiting the value of whatever Beijing can glean from the high altitude balloon, which is the size of three buses. Oh my God, it's the size of three buses. My goodness. According to another defense official, it does not create significant value added over and above what the PRC is likely able to collect through things like satellites in low Earth orbit, the senior defense official said. Now, it, it, it goes on. The article goes on and on and on, but we're not going to read any more on that article to be listed down in the description box if you want to read the whole thing but what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to these live updates um the you uh, uh what what we're covering this is cnn as well what we're covering u.s secretary of state A anthony blinken has postponed his upcoming trip to china in response to the flying of a suspected chinese spy balloon over the united states the Pentagon said Friday evening that another Chinese spy balloon has been spotted over Latin America. So I guess uh, I guess both of these uh, uh, civilian airships just kind of ran off a course and both of them ended up flying over the Americas. Because now there's another one over Latin America. The Pentagon said that the balloons over the U.S. is being used for, for surveillance, rejecting China's claim that the, aircraft, uh, that the aircraft is a civilian airship for research that deviated from its course. So I guess, like I said, you got both of them now that have deviated from their course. Because you got one over the continental United States and you got one over Latin America. The Pentagon said the balloon doesn't present a current threat and the U.S. continues to monitor it as it moves eastward over the central U.S. Okay? But Now, this is what came out two hours and a minute ago, right? And I found this interesting because I live in North Carolina. North Carolina Police Department urges residents to not take pot shots at suspected spy balloon. 
The Gastonia Police Department in North Carolina is asking residents, and Gastonia is not far from South Carolina. It's on the border. It's not far from Charlotte, and it's on the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. Um... If the now infamous Chinese weather quote unquote balloon makes it makes its way over Gastonia, please don't call the police to report it. The department wrote on Facebook. Police also reminded residents that they don't have the capability to respond to an altitude of 60,000 60, uh, feet to check it out, and we are pretty sure the feds would want us to stay out of it. The department ended the post by urging res residents to please don't take pot shots at it with your handguns in an attempt to bring it down on your own. Gastonia is a city of more than 80,000 people about 20 miles west of Charlotte. Yeah, two hours ago it says a uh, suspected spy balloon appears headed towards Carolinas or Virginia based on wind direction. So it was so it appeared to be headed this way, and I guess that's the reason why the Gastonia Police Department decided that they would go ahead on and put that warning out to tell people not to take pot shots at it, you know, to leave basically to just leave it alone. Right? But And this is coming from Eyewitness News ABC7. Second Chinese surveillance balloon spotted over South America, Pentagon says. Washington, the Pentagon has confirmed to ABC News that a second surveillance, uh, 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 Chinese surveillance balloon has been spotted transiting over South America. There were early reports Friday that the balloon was flying over, flying over Colombia and Venezuela, but there was no, info, uh, no information until now. We are seeing reports of a balloon transiting Latin America. We now access it as we now access it is another Chinese surveillance balloon, said Brigadier General Pat Ryder. Okay, so I think this is him right here. Hold on, y'all says the Pentagon is rejecting China's claims that the balloon traveling 60,000 feet over the Midwest is a weather... Okay, let's start that from the beginning, okay? Latest on the suspected Chinese surveillance balloon that continues to fly over American airspace. Just a short time ago this afternoon, the National Weather Service in Kansas City tweeting a large balloon is now visible over Missouri. All of this prompting Secretary of State Antony Blinken to now postpone his planned trip to China. The presence of this surveillance balloon in U.S. airspace is a clear violation of U.S. sovereignty and international law. We concluded that conditions were not conducive for a constructive visit at this time. This afternoon, the Secretary of State confirming he is postponing a planned high-stakes trip to China. This, as the Pentagon is rejecting China's claims that the balloon traveling 60,000 feet over the Midwest is a weather monitoring device that blew off course. The fact is, uh, we know that it's a surveillance balloon, uh, and I'm not going to be able to be more specific than that. Uh, we do know that the balloon has violated U.S. airspace and international law. Uh, which is unacceptable. The Pentagon saying they have conveyed this information to China. The large Chinese reconnaissance balloon now heading southeastward, appearing in these images over Missouri. It comes after photos captured it over Montana earlier, carrying what U.S. officials say is the surveillance component that's roughly the size of three buses. We currently assess that the balloon does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground at this time. Officials confirm the balloon has has traveled for days from western Alaska to the Midwest and has gone over and will proceed over nuclear and missile facilities. <laughs> President Biden today ignoring questions on the balloon. He continues to be briefed on the situation, previously agreeing with recommendations by military leaders against shooting down the balloon due to the risk of falling shrapnel on civilian areas. Despite that, congressional Republicans like Montana Representative Ryan Zinke simply tweeting, shoot it down. The Chinese spy balloon is a clear provocation. U.S. officials underscoring this is not the first time China has done something similar, although it is unusual that this balloon can be maneuvered, able to reposition itself and linger over areas.
So right now, the balloon appears to be heading toward North Carolina. The Pentagon saying this afternoon this balloon may continue traveling for a few more days, but they stress at this time it is not deemed to be a threat. Now, meanwhile, Illinois Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamoorthy saying this afternoon he is glad Secretary Blinken is postponing his trip to China. Congressman. So, yeah, that's them talking about the balloon. And now it has been confirmed that there's another balloon. You know, and China is saying that it's not, it's not, it's not being maneuvered. That is, you know, that the wind is just pushing it off course and all of that. But they're saying that it's able to just linger over areas for a long period of time. So it's being maneuvered. It's being maneuvered from somewhere. Some outside source is maneuvering this balloon. Okay. And now you got one over Latin America. Okay. Now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because it's something I wanted to read. Something I saw here that I wanted to read to you guys. Hold on. I got to find it, though. It's trying to hide from me. Hold on, I'm going to find it. Okay, well, I can't find it that way, so I'm going to find it this way. There it is. Here it goes. Now, this is by Jared Gans, National Security. It's all from the, also from The Hill, and it was at 11.04 p.m. tonight. Right, and it, it asks the question, what are spy balloons and what is their purpose? Right, um, and it goes on to say, tensions between the United States and China heightened Friday when U.S. officials publicly identified a Chinese surveillance balloon drifting across the country. The Chinese foreign minister confirmed that the balloon, balloon belongs to China, but have claimed that it is a weather balloon that went off course as a result of the wind. U.S. officials have rejected that claim. And I guess the reason why, partly the reason why they're rejecting that claim is because um, they can clearly see that it's being maneuvered and that even though the wind is blowing or whatever, the same wind that supposedly knocked it off course or whatever, it's able to stay in one spot in an area for a long period of time. That's how people are able to, to take pictures of it and you know and and it's still in the same spot two or three hours later or whatever the case may be the u.s has still not shot down the balloon though citing concerns that people on the ground could be in harm's way as a result it was first spotted over montana on wednesday and has moved across the continent being seen in northeast kansas on friday afternoon surveillance balloons have been used by many countries over the years uh, well before satellites existed and continue to be used in certain situations for intelligence gathering. The Guardian reported that modern, day, that modern day spy balloons include a certain piece of surveillance equipment like a camera or a radar held below a balloon that is guided by wind currents. But Brigadier General Pat Ryder, the Pentagon press secretary, said in a briefing that this balloon has some ability to maneuver itself. These types of balloons usually operate somewhere between 80,000 to 120,000 feet above the ground, which is much higher than the height commercial flight commercial airlines fly to, according to The Guardian. China's balloon has reportedly been traveling at 60,000 feet in the air, still much higher than the roughly 40,000 feet planes can reach. Although satellites have become much more pr prominent in modern times, using high-altitude balloons still provides some advantages. Timothy Heath, a senior international defense researcher for the RAND Corporation, said balloons are tough to detect because they do not have much metal presented a difficulty to radar sensors. They are also less predictable once discovered, he said. Politico reported the balloons are 
excuse me, y'all. The Pol P Politico reported the balloons are also much cheaper to create and operate than satellites, and they can carry more than a drone can. The balloons can also travel long distances without needing to receive additional fuel and can stay over a specific area for a longer period of time than a satellite that orbits Earth. The use of spy balloons reportedly dates back to as early as the 1700s during the French Revolution and has played key roles in military and intelligence operations. So everything that they're saying and all this wording that they're using uh, 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 speaks to intelligence, military, what's really going on here? That's the question that we have to ask. What's really going on here? Why is China invading our airspace with these spy balloons? And now that we have two, you understand what I'm saying? Hopefully they won't try to keep up that lie that both of them uh, uh, just got, you know, just got deviated from their course by the wind. Okay? The New York Times reported that the Union and Confederate armies used balloons during the Civil War. Both sides experienced some logistical issues, but Thomas Payne, a curator at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., told the Times that this was the first time in U.S. history that an organized military effort to use balloons for surveillance happened. I guess talking about Civil War. Japan also sent 9,000 military balloons with bombs attached to the United States during World War II, but only six people in the U.S. were killed when they came in contact with one in May 1945, according to the Times. NASA also uses balloons for observing parts of Earth, sending one to the top of the atmosphere in 2015. Politico reported that the agency's use of helium balloons goes back to the 1950s. So this appears to be common practice. You understand what I'm saying? But each each time he's citing in history, it had, it was it was during wartime. Each time he just cited, it was during wartime. Okay, he started with the French Revolution in the 1700s. Okay, that was war. Uh, uh the Civil War. Uh, World War II, when Japan sent all them balloons over here attached with bombs. You understand what I'm saying? So each time he has sighted, it has been during wartime. So w what does that suggest to us? That now all of a sudden, we've got these two spy balloons in the Americas. One in South with Latin America, South America, and one in the continental USA. But history is showing that these balloons are used mostly during wartime. Okay? Get that. That's what he just said. That's what he just read. Uh, that according to uh, 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 museums and, and, and museum cur curators and all of this, the use of spy balloons reportedly dates back to as early as the 1700s during the French Revolution. That was war. The New York Times reported that the Union and, and Confederate armies used balloons during the Civil War. Japan also sent 9,000 military boom, uh, balloons with bombs attached to the United States during World War II. So each time he cites here that these balloons were used, it was during wartime. And I'm not fear-mongering. We just need to know what's going on. This is not to scare anybody or, or anything like that. We just need to know what's going on in our country and we need to understand the reason why certain things happen the way that they do. Makes you wonder about that whole Tyree Nichols situation. Was it a setup? Are they using it to distract the populace from what's really going on? 
and how deep uh, uh, this thing is with uh, 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 China and the Ukraine and Russia and all, how deep this stuff really is. Um, let me see what this one says. Okay, well, that just pretty much says the same thing, that um, a second balloon has been confirmed over Latin America. So, you know, on one hand, we got the white police officer finally being fired, but we still don't hear anything about any charges. You understand what I'm saying? We still have this seventh officer who hasn't been identified, fired, charged, no nothing. You understand? We, we, we got... Uh, 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 um, Jim Bojangles Clyburn doing what he always does, and that is undermining uh, foundational black Americans and, and, and stepping Hyundai in. Hyundai Sonata versus hold on, hold Honda on. Accord. Look what Sonata has, and what Accord doesn't. Look what Sonata has, and what Accord doesn't. Hyundai Stepping in and, and, and wanting the Democrats to compromise, you understand what I'm saying, over this George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, uh, but again, we've already told you, you cannot reform law enforcement. Why? Because law enforcement is the offspring of, it's the baby of, it's the creation of white supremacy. And white supremacy cannot be um, reformed. Law enforcement cannot be reformed. Law enforcement is white supremacy. That's where it stems from. That's where it was created. That's what it was created for to protect white supremacy, okay? Um, so you got him him doing what he does, so we're not surprised about that at all. And we got these Chinese balloons floating around everywhere. And ain't nobody doing nothing about it. Just up there floating around. We don't know what we don't know what they got in them. We don't know anything about them. They just up there floating around, and ain't nobody doing a thing about them. So it makes you wonder what's really going on. So, like I said, I'll have all of this information uh, listed in the description box. So you can go and, and you can read this stuff and you can do some uh, some research and some investigation of your own. You understand? But we have got to keep our eyes and ears open about what's going on with these balloons. You understand what I'm saying? We can multitask. We can do more than one thing at a time. That's the reason why uh, 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 we need uh, more and more members of the new black media so that at, uh, at, 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 at any given time, we're all talking about something. We're all talking about something. And uh, tomorrow I want to get into a story where uh, Fox News is reporting that ranchers warn that a disease, there's a disease that would decimate the cattle industry could cross the southern border. Ranchers are, are afraid foot and mouth disease, a highly contagious virus affecting livestock like cows and sheep could cross the southern border. So, you know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into a little bit of that tomorrow. So, you know, it, it's 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 it, it's imperative that all of us are talking about something. You understand? It, we're all talking about something. We might not be talking about the same thing, but it's imperative that we're all talking about something and that we're all digging a little bit deeper to see what's really going on. Because if you don't dig a little bit deeper and you just pay attention to the news and you just pay attention to mainstream media and you just pay attention to what these politicians put out there for you, then you wouldn't know that um, each time, according to history, that each time these balloons, these types of balloons have been used, it was during wartime. So that's just what I wanted to bring y'all. I wanted to bring y'all some updates. I wanted to bring y'all some information on these balloons. 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that Tariq is doing a, a, a live or, or, or something about these balloons as well tonight because everybody needs to be paying attention and everybody needs to understand that when we get all of these stories and all of this stuff happens and, and all of this, a lot of times it's, just, it's distraction. It's to distract us from really what from what's really going on. Just like to distract us from the fact that they now in California and so and, and, and I think it's one or two other states have now actually passed it to allow illegals, undocumented folk, illegal aliens to come in and be police officers, to work as police officers. And we're going to, you know, we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about that. As a matter of fact, we might talk about that a little bit tomorrow when we talk about this cattle disease. And how they went under the radar in California to pass that bill. We already know they're giving them driver's license. You understand what I'm saying? We already know that there were several states that, that, that passed so that they could be allowed to vote. And now they're being allowed to come here illegally breaking the law, but you're going to be a police officer. You are already breaking the law. You here illegally. Every minute that you spend on this soil, you are breaking international law. You are breaking the laws of this country. What uh, You know, the whole nine yards. But then you are allowed to come here, be here illegally, and then you're going to be a police officer to enforce the law against legal American citizens. So illegals are being given the right to enforce the law against law-abiding, lawful American citizens. Make that make sense. But we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that tomorrow when we talk about this, um, this foot and mouth disease. Okay? So uh, that's just what I wanted to bring y'all tonight. I wanted to bring y'all these updates. I wanted to bring you this information. Uh, uh, look up, you know, what's going on with these balloons and, and look up the history of these spy balloons and understand that based on the history, uh, they've only been used, they, they, they will, maybe not only, but they've mostly been used during wartime. Okay? So, um, that's it. Y'all please like this video. Please share this video. Please have these conversations on and off social media. Uh, 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 please hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we upload videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel. All the channel information, uh, as well as the PayPal and, and the GoFundMe and all of that information will be, as long, along with these articles and, and all of that, will be listed down in the description box. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate you sticking with me and, and you coming back after I was gone for so long. But I am doing my best to try to be here with you so that um, I can do my part as far as being a part of the new black media and bringing you this information. I need y'all definitely, definitely we need to get on code. You understand what I'm saying? If that family of Tyree Nichols was on code, we wouldn't see some of the foolishness that we just saw over the last couple of days at that funeral. So please get on code and stay on code. It is vital that we get on code and stay on code right now. Keep your head on the swivel. Be smart. Stay safe. Keep your power tools at the ready. And I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Have a good one.